Hey guys, today's episode is with Francesca Martinez. Francesca is known as Francesca Fit on Instagram. I highly recommend looking her up and following her. She's very inspiring. She does um, what we call animal flow. So she's an animal flow instructor. She's also an instructor at On It Academy in Austin, Texas. Um, she has amazing content. She and her boyfriend, Eric, who goes by Primal Swolger, just have these amazing videos of honestly just watching what the human body is capable of. I've really enjoyed following them and also meeting them while I was out in Austin, um, maybe a couple of years ago. Um, and yeah, she's just so great. She's going to come and talk to you guys about animal flow, how that evolved for her, for her, from like, even as a little girl, just loving dance all the way into, um, break dance and all these different athletic things that she did falling in love with yoga that led into this desire to just truly move her body in a way that's very natural and combining dance with strength and yoga. So, um, she's going to dive into that. If you guys aren't watching on YouTube, remember you can watch video versions of all of these podcasts on my YouTube channel. Um, so yeah, we'll go ahead and jump right into it. Here is Francesca Martinez. So I want to tell you guys about one of my favorite finds in the health industry in the last few years. It's something I use with all my clients, and that has been extremely impacting on me as well. And that's the upgraded formulas, hair mineral tests, their consults, and their nanoparticle size minerals. So um, I started on this path because I was taking in a high quality magnesium. And when I tested, I found out that I was extremely deficient in magnesium. And once I started using their nanoparticle size magnesium, my levels went right up. And what I experienced was incredible. I started getting more REM sleep. I was, I realized I hadn't been dreaming in years, started dreaming again, and also noticed that I didn't think I had anxiety until I got my magnesium back up and noticed that I was experiencing quite a lot of anxiety and that went away. And I was able to enter back into a place of calm and peace. And, um, it was just incredible. And so since then I've been using it with all of my clients and it's so easy. All you have to do, they'll mail you out a little envelope and you just put some hair in it and mail it back into their lab. And then you do a consult with them over the phone and they'll tell you all about your ratios, what's high and what's low, because you can't know this unless you test, there's no way to know. And you you can't just crap shoot minerals. You have to make sure that your ratios are on point. So they will tell you exactly what you need more of exactly what you need less of to get those ratios on point. So you can have optimized brain health and hormones and sleep and metabolism. So, um, they're also giving you 10% off for being an inside out health listener. So that code is just inside out. So, um, go to upgradedformulas.com and just enter inside out at checkout and you'll get 10% off their consults, um, the hair tests and any products that you may need to get your ratios, right? So, um, yeah, take advantage of it, guys. It's something I use with every single one of my clients. It's been wildly impacting, and I'm happy to be able to extend that discount on to you guys too, as a thank you for listening to the podcast. Okay. Hey, Francesca. So I'm really excited today because I really love what you're bringing to the table for women in fitness. I love this. Like you've, you've really honestly created a movement literally like no pun intended, but oh. with your movement style, like with this primal fit movement style is so cool. So unique, you know, and before we get into that, I I'd love to just hear your backstory. Like where, what has been your journey with fitness? How did you get to this point where you're now this primal fit, like goddess on Instagram that all these women are looking up to what happened oh, you're so <laughs> sweet I can't oh you're too sweet <laughs> it's true um, <laughs> I know but it's like always like you know it's like it's truly flattering and I'm such a humble person that sometimes you know like I forget that like I actually like impact other people so yeah you know especially when you're introverted you're like yeah I'm just doing my thing yeah but yeah that's honestly how it started me just kind of um just falling in love with movement um, so I grew up as an active kid when I was young. Um, I have memories of like dancing to Barney. Like that was like yeah. my jam. So I was always like a lover of movement. I always love like just expressing myself through movement. Mm -hmm. So at the age of three, my family put me into dance and I started dancing at the age of three and I loved it. And I continued dancing for a while. And then I kind of like started getting out of it, mostly just because my mom was a single mom. So, and I realized I, I was like really conscientious of like finances when I was young. Mm -hmm. So I remember I have a memory of telling my mom like, yeah, I don't need to go to dance. You know, like I can do other things. So I dabbled in other sports because dance, um, especially for a lot of, you know, families, especially right now, you know, like those extracurricular things are yeah. expensive. You know, so I dabbled in other things. Like I did like group sports. I did soccer. I tried karate. Um, so I always was like an active person and then it kind of just continued evolving. So I went back to dance, um, probably like in my preteen years, I probably only took like two years off of dance though. 
And then I ended up enrolling in a dance high school. So it was like one of those magnet schools where we dance mm. every day for two hours. Oh. And then I remember doing that for a while and realizing like, I love movement. I love, you know, like being active, but you know, it's not my passion to wake up every day and do two hours of ballet. You know, that's yeah, completely right. a different level. So I still wanted to stay active. So I got more into, I think it was at the same time, actually, like I started realizing I just wanted to move as like an extracurricular hobby and again, and not have yeah. it be like my full time. So mm -hmm. I started getting more into break dancing and it's kind of how like my story evolved, like always kind of like jumping from one physical hobby to the next. And then I really got into break dancing. And I think that's what got me really interested mm. in like the whole trick, you know, like culture of movement, like learning yeah. how to do the handstands, like going back to the back bends, because dance still has that aspect of it, but you're just doing it for the performance, you know, like no one's trying yeah. to see whose back bends better than the next girls, you know, like it's not right. so trick based. Um, but yeah, that's kind of how organically like my life kind of just cool. went on going. And then I started studying exercise sports science. Um, cause I was really into like rollerblading at one point and I realized yeah. like it wasn't enough exercise, you know? Yeah. So I was like, all right, I need to figure out about lifting and like actually learn about the human body. And then it's like, mm. you know, just continued spiraling from there. So, okay. So were you, did you always live in Austin? No, I'm actually from South Florida. Yeah. I'm from Miami. Okay. So how did that journey go for you? Did you go to train at on it or how did you get involved with, you know, we see a lot of your, I, I think, right. Most of your videos on Instagram and stuff, those are at on it, aren't they in Austin? Yeah, so when did you, when did you, when did that transition happen? So I was working at a gym in Miami and then this was around 2016. So like four years ago. And then I only worked at the gym for like one, nine months. And then I decided like, Hey, I'm going to do my own thing. So like, right when I decided I was going to do my own thing and kind of like branch off, mm -hmm. I met my boyfriend, Eric, and I met him mm -hmm. through my uncle. So I met him through like, you know, mutual friend, mutual family, <laughs> which the by the way, Eric, otherwise known as yes. primal soldier on Instagram. Mm -hmm. If you guys follow Eric, you, if you follow Francesca, you'll follow Eric. And there, you guys are just like this beautiful, like fit king and queen of fitness or something <laughs> I'm the primal one <laughs> but um yeah so we met at a bar because my uncle so my boyfriend was Eric he was in town teaching a workshop and then my uncle who's also into fitness was like hey you should show us like what's your favorite spot to go dancing and you know just so we can have a nice you know night on the town so yeah I met my boyfriend and then he like pretty much uh, I think maybe like a month after we met, he's like, yeah, you should come to Austin and come check it out. And I was like, okay, cool. And I already knew about on it. And um, actually one of the reasons why I started training at the gym that I was at for nine months was because it was like an on it affiliated gym. So oh, cool. I really wanted to get into like the on it culture and learn about the unconventional tools. Imagine that. <laughs> yeah. So it was real funny. So yeah. So I met my boyfriend and then a couple months later, I ended up moving to Austin and then yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, um, so when you got to Austin and all this stuff, when did you start getting into, like, I know you were doing kettlebell movements and I feel like, um, just from the time that I've seen you on social media, I feel like you've kind of like evolved even more, like you've more embraced more and more yourself of this, like primal movement that you do. Like how, how was that? Cause were you doing that all the way from when you were doing break dancing and stuff, you've always been, you go to the gym and you just do primal movement or has that kind of evolved, um, as you've become more, into fitness and as a coach definitely evolve more I think it all really started like taking off for me once I realized that there was like a connection between like yoga type movements because I, yeah. I had like a love and like a little love affair with yoga while I was in college and a little bit mm -hmm. after college so kind of realizing that you can kind of yeah. combine like this mindfulness movement where we're like mm -hmm. going into our bodies with like plyometrics and I honestly one of the biggest things for me I did a tough mutter I think it was like 2012 2013 but I did their whole training program like a psycho like I did it exactly how they told you I didn't mm -hmm. miss a day mm -hmm. and they had us doing really cool stuff like it was way more because you, you're familiar with the mud runs they have you like yeah crawling right. on your elbows and right. doing wacky stuff <laughs> um so that definitely got me more into like the primal aspect because it was just mm -hmm. really functional training like they were having you do like you know trying to balance on a ball and like, yeah. you know, like do weird push-ups and trying to cross so I think that was really what took it off for me and I was like Whoa. Whoa, like there's so many connections 
Um, yeah. yeah. I, cause what I love about it and I'm always, I've always been drawn to plyometrics too. I guess they, they intimidate me, but I like worship that I follow all these plyometric <laughs> accounts. I'm like, Oh my gosh, that's so cool. What they can do with the human body. I think if you're, if you're into athletics or sports or anything, like watching anyone be excellent and what they can do with the human body is so inspiring. Cause it's like, Oh, they're making that look so effortless, but that's actually so hard what they're doing. And it's, it's I- incredible. Um, okay. So I want to go back for a second because I also like, I think as a trainer, like when you're in the gym and you're lifting, even doing function, functional training, um, high intensity interval, more functional stuff. Still, when you go to yoga, you're going to get your ass handed to you and yoga, especially <laughs> if it's like a hard yoga class. It's like, Oh, me and my muscles. I thought I was fit. Actually, I can't do any of this stuff. And this little like four foot 11 chick in the front is kicking my ass right now, you know? And, <laughs> and, and I've had so much respect for it because you also get this, you know, breath work and, um, you get that, that tuning into yourself and what you're really capable of and seeing the strength that comes from within. And so I love yoga too, because it, it's honestly everything that you can't get in the gym. In my opinion, like you're not going to get like going and doing deadlifts and squats and lunges. You're just not going to get those micro movements, the micro control of all these little teeny tiny stabilizers, deep core muscles. But what I see that you're doing is you're, you're really bridging those two together. It's like you've bridged like yoga, dance and training in a way. And it's really cool. Like I watch your stuff and I'm like, dang dude, that looks hard. What's that You're speaking to my soul? Yeah. 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 Is that like, what, what, tell me this, like when you're doing these animal flows and things like what, what, what drives you, what do you get out of it? What is the feeling inside of yourself that you like about it? Oh, I love you so much. I already loved you before. This, <laughs> your questions are like next level. <laughs> Honestly, it just makes me feel like I'm one with my body. I feel like as like yeah. modern people, we feel so disconnected from our bodies. Like, you know, I'll go the whole day with like a stiff neck and not even realize it. Or like mm-hmm. I'm hanging my neck forward, like on my phone all day, like a little robot, you know? But mm-hmm. once I feel like I'm able to move and with the animal flow too, it's like, there's no, there's no prescription. Like you're just doing whatever kind of comes to you for sure. You can, you know, yeah. have like a, you know, a scheduled set and you're okay, we're going to do this many reps of this. But when you like really just get into the animal flow, like you're truly in the flow, like you're one with yourself, like time stops, like it's totally to me, it's like, like you said, like it's a dynamic yoga. Like I feel like I'm doing yoga because I'm like thinking about my hand placement. I'm thinking about every part of my body, but it's like timeless. Like I feel like time stops Yeah. and like, yeah, I don't know. That's how I feel. I feel like it's like a workout for my soul. Like I like, yeah. I like combining like creativity and strength and flexibility, like kind of just combining all those elements into one. Yeah. That's, that's, that's <laughs> what I mean. Even just doing yo intuitive yoga flows feels like yes. that. Right. But, but you're, you're doing that, but you're also pushing your body to its limit. So it's like, it's like pure presence and combining the soul with the body. Right. Like, Absolutely. Uh, it's kind of like, who's leading. Is it, is it you? Is it your mind? or is it your body? Like, it's like, sometimes you probably can't even tell is what I would assume, right? Like you're just purely present. (laughs) Like it's so symbiotic. Yeah. Very cool. Mm -hmm. Okay. I have to ask you this too. So you mentioned that you're an introvert and now you're in this, (laughs) you're, you're in this situation (laughs) in which now you have hundreds of thousands of followers on Instagram. You're getting like all this attention and all this, like all these accolades, all I'm sure you're, I mean, I can only imagine I have like 20,000 followers on Instagram and I feel slammed a lot, right? Like of like (laughs) questions and people telling me their stories and and I appreciate it. It's so beautiful, but it's also can be a lot. Like, what has that been like? Like, what can you share some insights for other? Cause there's so many people that want to do what we do, right? Like they want to lead and they want to have online fitness businesses, but can you share some insights, especially as an introvert, what that's been like? Oh man. Yeah. And just as a disclaimer, this is nothing I ever like kind of, I know. And like you said, some people want, want that. I never yeah. in my life. No. <laughs> I would assume. <laughs> never, I would assume. Yeah. Um, so yeah, for me, it's really just like a balancing act of making sure that like I'm engaged, I'm like showing up, but like not letting myself become consumed. Um, yeah. I think a lot of times, like, especially, um, I know a lot of people say this, but like we focus, like, especially as just any living creature that survived like millennia, we're drawn to the negativity, you know, our bodies, yep. Like, yep. 
got to remember the negative so that, you know, like if something dangerous happened in the wild, we remember it, you know, but when it's social media and you're like bombarded with all this negativity. Mm -hmm. Um, so for me, it's just being really conscientious of like, if I will feel like I'm overwhelmed, like take a break, uh, don't feel, and especially too, like in our modern world, um, this happens with everybody. Like if somebody sends a message, they want somebody to respond like right now. And it's like, right. you know, that's just not going to happen anymore, you know? And then sometimes I'm still tempted. And if it's somebody I like, and I love, of course, I have the urge to be like, okay, let me just go back into my phone. But mm-hmm. it's having those boundaries. I'm like, okay, yeah. I know you love this person, but don't respond. Cause then you're going to get sucked in your phone for like yeah. an, a while. And yeah. then just going back to that negativity, it's like really reframing my mindset and just, um, Actually, one of my friends, I met with him recently. He's like super, super famous um, skater. He's his name's Neen Williams. He's also like an on it athlete. Um, you know, probably, you probably know Neen. Um, but I Neen, know, but I, I'll he's, find I'll find him now. <laughs> he's amazing. He's super cool. But we were talking about that and how you know everybody deals with it differently. And he says he just leaves them on red and he loves to ignore like the negative people online because people yeah. just want attention. You know, especially yeah. when people are just craving like engagement and negativity. And it's it sucks, but a lot of people go online for that. It's kind of wild. Yeah. 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 I, I, I love what you're, yeah, I love what you're saying. Cause I feel like, um, being, especially in fitness and especially as a woman, I feel like even more and someone uh, who's like ecstatic type of fitness movement, whatever you want to call it, you know, like it's not your typical. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I don't, you feel, I feel like it's a personal development journey in and of itself, putting yourself out there because truly like putting yourself out there on videos, like in a sports bra and pants for everybody to just see and whatever they think it's and vulnerable and, showing and everything. Yeah. <laughs> You know, it's horrible. And I, it definitely, I feel like for me anyway, it's caused me to learn to let go of, of being paralyzed and crippled by what other people think, because I know that in my heart space, I'm coming from a place of giving. And so when I know that I'm like tuning in and tapping in and I'm like, what good can I do in the world today? And yes, I'm going to mess up and everything's not going to be perfect and not everyone's going to like it, but I know in my heart that I'm, my intentions are good to give. Then I feel like it's, it's such a beautiful growth journey because yeah, some people will be like, you should and do your arms like that. Cause that's going to hurt your rotator cuff or something. You know, you get like some kind of comment <laughs> like that. And you're just like, dude, <laughs> I'm doing the very best that I can. And it's, it's, it teaches you boundaries. It teaches you, like you said, that's such an excellent, whether you have a bunch of people hitting you up from social media or not, that's an excellent lesson for everybody is like, I don't have to respond to every little ping and text as they come in so that I don't get sucked in and my whole life gets gone. I love that advice because I, I truly feel like that's a huge part of why we have so much anxiety right now is because like you can't get anything done because you're getting sucked into your phone every five minutes for who knows how long. <laughs> Did you watch um, The Social Dilemma on Netflix? Yep. It's so good. And every time I like really feel like the algorithms are trying to get me, um, yeah. they'll like you know how they did the thing where they're like, oh, we're going to like show you your ex every day, or we're going to show you that your ex has a new, you know, significant other. They really do show me my ex. And I don't understand <laughs> me why. Too, girl. <laughs> I have no interest in you. Like what's going on? <laughs> I know. I'm like, why did I get notified that he posted something? What? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Tell me this. So somebody's like, let's say somebody is, they've never done any sort of animal flow. Like they they're watching what you're doing and they're like, uh, like they're maybe too afraid to even start. Where does somebody start? Ooh, yes. So I love starting people off with just like a joint by joint body awareness exercise. So we don't even Mm. get on the ground. We don't even get down in primal. It's literally just like a routine where we articulate all of our joints. So like, let's say we're doing like hip circles or we'll do neck circles or shoulder circles. So we hit each joint in the body and just teach our body how to move that joint, how to isolate it and kind of just building that mind body awareness. And at the Anya Academy, and I know a lot of other like movement systems, we call that like body mapping. So essentially you're getting like a better idea of how your brain and your body are related. So having a really great idea of like, oh, maybe I do have tightness on like internal rotation on my shoulder, or maybe like Mm -hmm. the left side of my neck is always tight, no matter which movement I do, you know, so kind of getting a really big understanding of where we have tightness, where we have limitations. And even let's say your neck feels great and it usually feels, you know, stuck. That's, you know, kind of building on that body mapping kind of how you feel from day to day. So that's usually where I start people just like super simple, maybe 15 minutes of that. And then we'll get on the ground. 
Very cool. Yeah. Just mindfulness with the body. Right. And I think I love what you're saying too, because I feel like so much, I am assuming you have some sort of spiritual practice. I would think, uh, it just, it seems like it to me. And I, I feel like so much of the spiritual community is like, I am not my body. And it's like, well, I, of course, <laughs> like, of, like your soul is not your body, but it's awesome that you have a body. Like, how about that mentality? It's awesome. Maybe we really, really want to have bodies and maybe we can enhance our experience with our bodies. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> so I love that you're bringing that together. It's like the soul and the body, like celebrating our bodies, celebrating the fact that we can move, celebrating, like and even being aware of like, can you turn your shoulder? in and can you turn it out? Like if not, Oh, that's like your job as this divine being to take care of that and help it. Right. So I love, I love that mindfulness connection that you're getting there. And then, okay. So, so beyond that, okay. This is actually what I was wondering. What about like, what's the most difficult stuff that you do with, with animal food and stuff that you're like, crap, (laughs) that even challenges you. So my weakness is for sure. Like stability work. So I'm, I love the explosive stuff. I can go all day, like have me do cardio bunny stuff. I'll go all day. Like, but ask me to hold the position for like a minute and you'll see tears coming out of my eyes. So that's for sure my weakness. And part of it too, just for context is, um, I have scoliosis. So for, I'm like all out of alignment, you know? So for me, my natural state of being is asymmetrical. You know, I'm, I move asymmetrically. Like I embrace, um, my asymmetries. So, you know, of course I try to balance them, you know, everything in moderation, but yeah, the stability is, (laughs) yeah. You know what? That's a great point. Cause I think, I, I mean, men and women, but especially women, because we're so like, we were never expected to lift weights or do any sort of resistance training at all. It was literally just, just run or run or walk with your friends and that's it. So then we come, we come from that background into lifting and nobody has any freaking stability. That's why I love like overhead carries and weighted carries and things that can help like isometrics that can hold help with that because you're so prone to injury. If you can't do the stability work and stability work is so miserable. (laughs) It's It's so not fun to just sit there and hold something with all your might for like (laughs) 60 to 90 seconds. That's not really fun as fun as like jumping across something or whatever. So yeah, I love that you bring that up because I think all of us, it's a good reminder for all of us to do stability work so that we can be stronger and not get injured when we go to be explosive and do everything else. So, and just for like longevity, like even Mm -hmm. for some of us that aren't like as in tune with our athletic selves, like just, even if you're like a gamer, or even if you have a desk job, like we need so much stability just for our trunk. Yep. And yeah. so many of us are missing that. What are some things that you do for stability? Oh, so number one thing, breath work. So it doesn't ever sound like it's a stability exercise, but actually learning how to like fill our diaphragm up and yeah. fill up our abdomen is great for stability. And then I really like ooh, horrible. There's this thing where you get on all fours and you just lift opposite hand, opposite foot. Yeah. You can just hold that position, but I really like static holds. So any positional static holds are great. So you can do plank, side plank. You can do like a bear position. Um, so yeah, I'm all about it. Yeah. Yeah. Like a, like a dead bug. Is that what I'm get, gathering from you on that first one? You're, you're mm-hmm. on all fours, hands and knees, and then yeah, alternate. Yeah. Those are super good. And you know, what's crazy is so many, nobody does those. Like, unless you hire some sort of trainer, nobody actually goes in and does any of the work that they probably need to be doing. And it's, it's hard sometimes as a trainer, cause you're like, Oh, mm, like you have no hip or shoulder mobility. And you know, it's just like, man, that could be so much more fun for you if you would do some of that work. So I honestly, like, I love the, the flow stuff that you're doing because it's encouraging people to do what I consider basic self-care basic self-care, like, like yoga and these kind of movements are like, like we should all be doing that, like almost innately as like animals, <laughs> especially too. When you said self-care, you did like a little like chest extension. It's like, yeah, we need to like extend our back and flex our back, like just for yeah. health, not for anything else. <laughs> right. Cause I, you know, if you think about it, like, I feel like when we were little kids, so I have four kids. So when oh. I watch, when I watch my kids, like they do yoga intuitively, like we go into yoga class and then they're, it's like, Oh, prop up your hips with your hands and like bend your feet backwards. I see my kids do that all the time. I remember doing that as a kid. Like my kids will be upside down watching TV on the couch, like doing scissors with their legs. And you know, like I, I call them my little yoga teachers. Cause 
because as I watch them, I'm like, you guys do this intuitively. And I think what happens is as we get older, we get embarrassed. We get like shamed out of moving. <laughs> yeah. In a way that's natural for us. So I love what you're doing because you're like, you're, you're exemplifying the freedom that innately comes to us as human beings, but you're like not afraid to keep doing it as an adult and in front of hundreds of thousands of people. So good on you. I, I, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> for real though. I think that's, you honestly wrapped it up perfectly. Like it's just moving our human bodies, how they feel great doing it, you know, like yeah. apparently, uh, like you said, like when they kick their leg upside down, you know, when they're upside down and they kick their legs, like in a scorpion, it's called a scorpion in yoga too, right? A little I scorpion. think so. I don't know. Um, <laughs> I was posing for Christmas photos with my cousin last year. And that's literally what he did. He went like upside down and like pop one leg up. I was like, okay, cute pose. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. It's like, it's like tapping into your child self. It's being playful still. It keeps you young and healthy and fit and all those that's things. Crazy. Okay. I'm curious what, like, how can people partake of what you have? You have like an ebook course. Do you do like a, 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 in-person events or, you know, how can people learn from you? All of them. <laughs> so hey, tell it, fill us in. So you can start with, I have a free program that I offer to everybody. It's online and that one's a four week free program. And that one's just really getting people into the like kind of just exploration of movement. So it's super structured. You know, I give them how many reps, how many sets to do. And I do them, I'll do like one circuit with everybody. And then I also have in-depth educational programs. So for people that want more guidance and they want um, to really just dive into that joint mobility practice that I said in the beginning. So we start like that. And then we slowly start learning all the movements one by one. And then I also do, not right now, but uh, when we're not in weird times, I usually do um, in-person workshops. And then I usually have like a monthly class running here in Austin too for all the locals. Um, but yeah, that one, I think it's been like nine months since we've had it, but it will go on eventually. Yeah. It still will go on y'all. <laughs> eventually, so eventually when the world ba opens back up, are you going to do those in-person workshops? Do people come from all over the, they can come from all over and attend those? Yeah. And we usually travel, we'll travel like all corners of the U S so nice. we've done like literally every corner. I <laughs> offer awesome. <laughs> okay. Awesome. Yeah, so we'll just keep our, and so do they go to your website if they want to find out about when, you know, when that's going to happen again? Yeah. So, um, go to my website. I always, uh, add the events onto there too. And then for anybody that has like a question that they can't find an answer to always like email me, DM me. I try to get back to everybody. Okay. Awesome guys. So it's Francesca Martinez.com and Francesca is F R A N C H E S K A Martinez. And I'll put link it in the show notes. So you guys see that ever. If you're not watching us on YouTube, you can see Francesca's beautiful face on YouTube. We are doing this on zoom video. I was hoping to catch you in Austin, but I had too many things going on, but maybe next time I'm out there where I, I can like, I'll just, I'll do like a little celebrity sighting video and you guys can see that too. <laughs> but I would love to attend one of your classes sometime when, when you start doing those again, because I think it's such a beautiful blend of, uh, mobility, strength, flexibility, and, um, also like just that, uh, like just, I guess what I, what I love about it the most is the deep, deep strength that it takes to do something that looks so subtle. I love that. Cause that's, that's what we need more of. We all want to do these big, like show, like, look at me, I can swing a hundred pounds around. And it's like, mm, actually, why don't you try to do that little teeny micro movement and hold it for 30 seconds like that? I love that kind of stuff. So anyway, I'll have to, I'll have to come check yeah. out one of your things when you start doing them again. <laughs> yeah, let me know when you're back. We'll grab some coffee and play a little yeah. bit. Yes. I'm on it. Fatty keto coffee. It'd be perfect. <laughs> All right, Francesca. Thank you so much for taking time out today. Um, we'll, so much. yeah. And if you guys want to follow Francesca on Instagram, you probably already do, but it's Francesca fit. Is it just straight out? Is there a dot or anything? Francesca fit. Okay. All right. Thanks girl. Thank <laughs> Appreciate you. it. Have a great day. Beautiful. You too.